Hello? Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you so much for uh, getting involved. I really appreciate your time. I know we were, and I know you don't know me from Adam, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But, yeah, but the thing is, when you said it, I actually I was, it's something I've been thinking of doing. So when you said it, I just grabbed it, you know? Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so let me get, how are you? First of all, I'm fine, thank you. Saturday cool. morning. Yeah. Uh, I have some questions. Let me just get them on my phone. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So here we go. So, um, I mean, most conversations I'm having, they last in about 40 minutes and stuff like that. Is there a way, to, do you have a light? Is there a way that you can, um, 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 hit the light to see your face? Is it, okay, hold on. Better? Yeah, that's much better. That's much better. All right. Much better. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, could you tell me a bit about yourself? Um, and one of the things I'm doing with my um, interviews is I am letting the person I'm speaking to introduce themselves and let people know them how they want to be. So please don't be shy about your accolades and experience and stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, like for my accent, you can see that I'm proper African. Yeah. You know, and uh, probably first generation Nigeria. Yeah, but although I'm British, but I like my accent. I'm proper Nigerian, as you can yeah, see. Okay. So yeah, my name is Uzochuk Christian Ilodibe. Um, hail from Nigeria, like I said. Um, I did. Um, I work, but I decided to. Because for a long time, I've, I've been thinking of doing this and I'm, I'm good at it. Um, I was in a church as well. So I was doing a lot of counseling and, mm. and advice and all that. So I decided, you know what, I'd rather get a degree. So I got a degree in counseling, actually person-centered counseling. So, so I got that degree from University of Colchester, or Center called Colchester. So with that, I've been practicing private practice as well. And also, I volunteer with um, St. Helena Hospice. Okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll like bereavement counseling. So yeah. I do that with them as well. So, yeah. And yeah, so like what I say to you, when you say that, because I've been, I know that most of us are black African minorities. We don't appreciate all counseling because we feel that it's not necessary, it's nothing. And <laughs> so, because when I was in the training, actually, like I was the only black person in, in, in the training. Okay. And most people have experience of that as well. And most of the clients I, I have, they are white people. Okay. Because we, uh, yeah, because we black people don't appreciate it. Don't, you know, most of, we'll get to that stage we'll later, but most of us, we believe that everything is religion or tradition or, mm. you know, when you tell somebody, oh, you need counseling, they say, oh, no, go to your pastor or that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get to that stage later. But yeah, yeah, so mostly that's what we do, Africans, we do. But I came to appreciate counseling and, and, and what it does. And most of my clients, when you counsel them, you could see the progress, you could see the growth. Yeah, okay. And that's where I get the satisfaction. I, you know, after sessions and the person says, oh, you put me through this, I went through this and, you know, you got me through it, you know, all kinds of things and stuff. So that's the satisfaction I get from it. And I really wanted that if this would bring awareness to our black people, yeah. to appreciate it, to, you know, grasp it yeah. and make use of it. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes they don't know, and they don't know even you can, that you can even get access to psychological services. Mm -hmm. Free access. Yeah. They don't know that. Sometimes, yeah, if you want to pay, you can pay. But there's so many out there that you can get for free. 
Okay. Even mental health apps. There are so many out there, but they don't know and they don't, they're not interested in it because of, like I said, tradition. They say, oh, no, um, God forbid, you know, those kind of things. Anything, anything I mention mental health, they think it's yeah. madness. I think it's, you know, so, you know, I don't know, but yeah. So, but I love what I do. And that's yeah, okay. It. So you said that, so, I mean, you said that you, you did the training, but you were already in the church doing yeah, counseling. counseling. So, so I got a degree from, I did three years training, which is degree, proper degree. And, yeah, okay. What were you doing in the church before? Like, um, in what way was, were you helping people? Um, I was doing, I was like the associate pastor of a church, which is a brain church anyway. And so usually don't people come to you and for yeah. counseling or I'm going through this, you know, what do I do or pray for me and stuff. So and one thing about it is because you're doing it, you don't know, you don't have the proper training for it. Okay. Like getting the degree and things that come with it, like confidentiality, discretion yeah. and all those things. So in doing the training, I learned a lot. It's not just about giving people advice. There's a lot of things that mm. are in play, you know? So, so doing this training, Sorry. Sorry, so, sorry. So as a associate pastor, when people were coming to you with certain problems, did you feel equipped? At the time, I thought I feel equipped because mostly what you do is church. You, you, you know, you kind of advise them and use the Bible to kind of give them reference of things. But the thing is, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get to, I didn't want to just be counseling only Christians. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it broad that even non-believers alike i can cancel them as well so in that way i can reach out to a lot of people yeah okay so you, you see so i didn't just didn't wanted to just sideline myself to just being counseling christians only yeah yeah okay um so the 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 pivot from you know being a associate pastor to becoming a professional counselor mm -hmm. how did your family how did your circle take it um they didn't take it well my family is okay with it but like the church i was talking about they didn't take it very well and i'm okay. not in that church anymore okay because when you do counseling a lot of things your your, your mind is broadened a lot of things come into play mm. and some things that you just you need to accept i don't need to go into that probably maybe in another session we'll talk about like lgbtq lgbt yeah. and all those things and you know in that kind of special africans no that's a no-go area no 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 you know those kind yeah. of things yeah but what i got to do this I, I i got to understand that a lot of things are into play and even our environment it affects uh, you know the way even growing up childhood a lot of things come into play it's yeah. not just uh, you know when you, you have a problem you're oh, don't worry about it, just pray, and it, it's, it's done. It's not that way, it's, it's yeah. not that way. There are a lot of things, you know, like you said, your doctor, if you, I have this, come on, okay, just can't take this medic medication, is I need to stop. You have to do the proper diagnosis and stuff, and you know, so I got to learn that, and I, I got to appreciate that, so yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, if, so just in theory, if you yeah. weren't a counselor, mm -hmm. what would you do? Um, you mean from being a Christian or just? Hey, I'm not limited. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I had, you know, I had so many, many things. By you know, growing up, you have a lot of things in your head. You know, uh, I want to be like a, a movie director or okay. writer, script writer. You know, those kind of things. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah, but but the thing is, growing up and a lot of things, a lot of people confide in me. Mm. They tell me things. They, I, I, I'm a good listener right from time. So they confide in me and I keep the secrets. Yeah. That's just me. You can tell me your greatest secret and I'll keep it to, to death, you know. But a lot of people, you know, you tell them things and they take it outside and they, you know, keeps gossip and before you know it's everywhere. So I knew there was a quality that I had. And when I got to this stage, I said, you know what? And I'm already doing it in the church. I'll do it in a proper way. Yeah. Do you think that, um, so that gift that you had to be able to hold somebody's secrets, mm -hmm. do you think that that is something that a counselor needs or is that something that a counselor can learn? It's something that they need. It's, it's, okay. it's one of the greatest criteria you, have, you must have as a counselor. Because being a counselor, there are a lot of things and that's what people don't know. First of all, you have insurance to work with. 
wants to be insured, mm -hmm. you have you must have a supervisor, which means that every month you have to go to the supervisor so that they make sure you are practicing safe and ethically. Yeah, okay. Okay, and again, you must you belong to a body, like I'm, I'm a member of BACP, which is a British Association of Counseling and Psychotherapy. Yeah, okay. And they have their own guidelines and things that you have to yeah. go through. I'm also a member of ICO, which is Information Commissioner's Office, because of data, because you're keeping people's data. Yeah. You must make sure that your data is preserved, otherwise you're gonna have to be fine. Yeah. Confidentiality is one of the main things that make counseling work, because people come to you to say things that they will never tell anyone. Anyone, yeah. And you must keep it, otherwise, it's, it causes more harm than good. Yeah. And that's one of the things I found out in church because when you tell the pastor anything, or they, before you know it, it spreads the, the whole place. The church I was telling you about, it, most of the people, they come and tell the pastors or the pastors, well, they, before you know it, the whole church has said about it. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it's a secret. That's why they came to you. They came to you to tell you their secret. I'm not saying it's every man of God or every pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know. Just, just so you know, I, I, I'm a PK. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so it's it causes harm, and I saw it, you know, devastating people and yeah, and families and things. So it's very wrong, and so it must be the main quality as a counselor. Yeah, you okay. must have that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So talk me through a day in a life. So a day in the life of a professional counselor. Talk me through what you personally do from when you open your eyes to when you put your head down? Okay, when I open my eyes, usually I already have clients lined up for me. Usually as a family, I might take the kids to school, come back, go for sessions, you know, see your clients. You know, usually it's 50 minutes a session, mm -hmm. you know, for individuals. Sometimes if it's couples, maybe or like an hour, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, because people come to you and they trust you. They have things that they want to resolve in their lives and things and you have to be there for them that's why they're coming to you you know and like i say i volunteer with St. Helena hospice which i do on fridays so fridays i go there and i work see clients there for on, on behalf of uh, St. Helena hospice mm -hmm. so at the end of the day normal go back you know go pick up the kids from school do your normal stuff and that's okay. it but what about like so when do you do you when do you pray do you eat do you do oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. You know, double breakfast, double afternoon lunch. Sometimes yeah. you miss lunch because people are waiting for you. But yeah, dinner okay. as well, yes. And uh, yeah, you wake up in the morning, you pray as usual. And like someone like me, I pray most of the time, even before every session. Okay. I I do pray. Like even before I I connected to you, I had to pray. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. so that the spirit leads and stuff. And uh, sometimes, like Saturdays, I told you I don't see clients Saturdays. I use it for CPDs. It's continuous practice. Yeah. You know, learn yeah. more. You keep. Because it's one of the criteria again. You must yeah. have 30 hours of CPD every year every as a counselor. Yeah. yeah. So you, have, you must do it to keep update your knowledge and stuff, which is yeah. those are the things that you know a lot of people don't know about. But yeah. How how do you think that the the lockdown and stuff has changed the the counseling landscape? Before before post um pre COVID, it used to be face to face. You know, people come to you, and a lot of people didn't know that online will work. So you, you were know. doing that before? Yeah, face to face. Oh, no, so I wasn't doing, nobody I wasn't was doing, doing it online. No, 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 no. no, it's just a few people. And people that usually do online is CBT, is cognitive um, um, therapy. Yeah. They do it on sometimes, like they have programs as well, apps that do online. Yeah, okay. You, know, you try to speak with a smart or AI or something. Yeah, okay. You know. But we, what I do is face to face, and most of why it is so, and it's more beneficial is because you tend to read people. It's not just counseling; you read people as well. Yeah, you tend to read their body moves, their, their you know, non-verbal cues and things. Yeah. So, for instance, somebody that is going through domestic violence is when they come to you, you could tell, you could tell that they're going through something or pain or you know, like children and yeah. stuff. You, you could tell, and and those things you have to flag it. It's one of the things that you have to disclose, the safeguarding and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or somebody that say self harming and stuff. Yeah. Those are the things you see. But when COVID came and we couldn't interact anymore, we now did more training on online stuff. Even online, I know I can just see like you know I can just see from this from your shoulder up. But you try as well as to see if you can. Yeah. Read some things, which is sometimes it's impossible, but you try. 
So is it is it it's harder from a non-verbal yeah. cues point of view? Um, yeah, it, it's harder because you're not, you're now deal, dealing with just facial and okay. Before you can do with hands, legs. You could see how the person's legs are shaking. You could tell that yeah, okay. it's nervous or something is or your hands. You know, you way you're fidgeting your hand. You know, but now you're just dealing with just facial structure. But so still, like, if if we were in a counseling sh session, would it be easier for you if I was like that so you could see? Like hands and yeah, probably yeah. You. Now yeah, even more more better. And yeah. if I could see the legs better, but usually the legs you can't see the legs, but more much better. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um. So, what has been your experience as a, a black man in the counselling landscape? My experience, I think it's. It has to deal with your position because I'm from Essex. I stay in Essex, so a lot of my, like I said, a lot of my clients are white mm. because I think the black people here are not really into it. And whenever I, I have friends, whenever you mention it, oh, I don't even know what you do there. What are you counseling? What are you, I know everything, you know, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we Africans believe that we know everything. What are you, what, what, what are you doing there? Well, you know, like those kind of things. But it's more than that, and. Yeah, most of my clients are whites and because they are, they, they've been doing it and the research has proved that it works. Okay. So they come to you. So I'm hoping that black people will kind of appreciate this and get, you know, utilize it. Yeah. For instance, I'll give you an example of grieving, bereavement. You, you, you lost a loved one. Mm. You know, growing up, a lot of things that we, we are taught are like man up. You know, you're a man, you're not supposed to cry, you're not supposed to show emotions. Yeah. These are negative things and yeah. they have affected a lot of men that mm. today they can't show emotions and it affects in their marriage or relationship. Yeah. You know? And but if they could learn to know that these things they are necessary to deal with, it was even trauma, yeah. childhood, a lot of things that went through, physical abuse, a lot of things that you know we grew up with, they are affecting us subconsciously, we don't even know that it's happening. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. So, but they they don't. But the whites appreciate it, so they know how to utilize it. They come to you. They tell you things. They reflect on it, and they feel better. So, my experience is that I hope you know I don't have much of black people. Maybe in other places like London, they might have. But yeah. still, I I know a lot of therapists, my colleagues that I know that they still say the same thing. That unless the only way a black person would go for counseling is referred by the GP or occupational therapy maybe in a workplace they say you must go through because they're going to pay for it right okay and, and even at that some still don't go up oh, blood of jesus i'm not going to go there you know <laughs> you know I, god forbid i'm not this you know but it, there's a reason why they say you should do it and when you go there you see that it's, it's you know do you think it's fear or or ignorance or both or like what is the thing that's making us as a as a, a people say it's not for me there are a lot of factors. I have it somewhere, but I don't know if we can share it. But one of them is stigma. You know, okay. a lot of, they don't want to, uh, you're going to cancel or you're mad. Oh, no. You know, those kind of things. Yeah, okay. I don't want them to feel that I'm having this issue or that. Another thing is religion, like we talked about. They believe everything is God. Yeah, God is everything. I believe in it. But that's, they're just like God designated lawyers, doctors, yeah. psychologists, counselors. There's a reason why God did it, you know. So people should appreciate that. And uh, a lot of things like family orientation or family honor, you know, like say, say you come from a, a line of kings or queens, uh, you're not supposed to do that. So then they'll say the son of a king is going to counseling or going to, yeah, okay. or, you know, they use the word mad, but which is wrong, you know? In your, in your, because the thing is, as a doctor, I am aware of like, um, I don't know whether it's a culture of shame. I've, I've, I've used that phrase before. Yeah. Uh, so I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. and, um, I also found out that I um, have high blood pressure. Okay. Uh, and then when I did a video, I, I put it on YouTube. Some people came to me and said, oh, yes, I have high blood pressure. I've had it for 10 years. These are people that I know. But okay. we're not good at, you know, having the conversation in the public space to say I'm dealing with something. So yes, true. You know, from a physical point of view, Let's not let anybody know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe historically, because it would have given my enemy an yes. advantage. Advantage, okay. No, and do you think it's the same sort of thing from a from a mental health um, point of view? Yes, it is because whenever you mention, I don't know this thing about I mean, Africans. Uh, whenever you mention mental health, they just see it as 
no, no, no go area. No, black, mad. I'm mad. No. Let's just see it as madness. For mental health, it was depression, anxiety. These are things that people go, you know, it happens to people all, all day long in every day of their lives. You might feel depressed because of someone died or something. It's normal. It's, it's mental health. Is not, yes, we have extreme ones like schizophrenia, you know, bipolar and all them stuff. But normal things like anxiety, being anxious or panic attacks, they're all mental health illness, you know? Yeah. So, but if they get to know it, that mental health is not a no-go area or a don't even talk about it. Uh, no, yeah. I, I reject it in Jesus' name. You know? <laughs> it's just it's just things that happen to us, you know, like headache or, you know, just normal things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I heard Bishop T.D. Jake say one time that, you know, um, the brain is part of your body. Yes. Your mind is part of you. If you have pain somewhere, you go and see a doctor to deal with your physical health. That's it. For some reason, when we have issues in our mental space, mm -hmm. um, and our, we need a tune up in our mental health, or people have started to develop mental illnesses, for some mm -hmm. reason, we don't see that the same. You know, True. for some reason, we, it's a completely different thought process yeah. to think I've got exactly. to help in this area. And I also yeah. heard him say, which I find really useful for people in the church, you know, spiritual problems require spiritual solutions. True. Physical problems require physical solutions. physical solutions, and emotional problems require emotional solutions. Pro by, that's it. By derivation, you know, um, you know, I, I'm aware of like I receive, I receive, I receive. All, uh, you know, I, yeah. I find it all that kind of stuff. You know, hey, it works. Yeah, it's, true. It's spiritual stuff. I'm don't get me wrong. I believe in faith, but oh yeah, me too. I'm very interested in this dichotomy we don't see it the same yeah. um but then i think that's got a lot to do with where we are you know in society so for instance one of the things i'm uh, one of the things i had to come to terms with when i had the stroke is thank mm -hmm. god i'm able to go back to work true but what if i wasn't able to go back to work then you know i would have to find another way potentially of making some money you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um but people who are interested in you know means I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive is, is, you know, and confession is part of it, but there's also something that we have to do. True. You know, the, the Bible talks about God blessing the works of our hands. Hands. True. If I'm not doing anything, there's nothing for God to bless, yeah. you know. True. Saying that, I heard a pastor as well, Apostle Selman, you mentioned it this way that, you know, faith is good. If you, by all means, if you can stretch your faith, do it. But if you're stretching your faith and you're still having a headache, let's say you have a headache, you can take Panadol. That doesn't mean, you don't have it doesn't mean that you're not, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And again, he say that even medication in itself is a miracle. Because imagine taking, let's say, Panadol or paracetamol, and it locates the part of your body that needs it and fixes it. Yeah. That is a miracle on its own. Yeah. I mean, I'm very much of the opinion that any sort of thing that works towards abundant life Yes. Is from God. So True. if I go somewhere, I have pain, I get, I get tablets. I don't have pain anymore. That's from God. Health, in whichever way you look at it, whether it be physical, emotional, mm -hmm. mental, is from God. That's my personal opinion. And anything that helps me work towards that, True. I'm happy to, to embrace. Um, okay. Uh, I, had a, I have a, 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 quite a few more questions, actually. Uh, okay. So can you talk... So you said a lot of your people are... are um, um, white, you don't have a lot of black clients. Yeah, no. Have you been struck by? So, which one of these two extremes would you say that you uh, you um, lean towards? That um, how different people are, or how similar everyone is? Which one do you think has been the experience that you lean towards? I think how similar people are, despite okay. the fact that you of what whatever race you are. We are all similar. We are going through different things, but in different perspectives, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Somebody might uh, having issues or and what might be causing it is death of someone or I, I keep using that, that word or maybe loss of job. These are similar things that we all go through. Yeah, okay. um, there, there's this hierarchy and um, Abraham Maslow, I don't know if you, the hierarchy of needs. 
Okay. If, if, if you Google it, it's there. It shows the basic things that we need to self-actualize. Yeah. That if we don't get those things, we'll, we'll be having issues in life. And if you, if you look at it, the first pyramid is even, most Africans have not even gotten there because it's just basic things like food, shelter, clothing. Yeah, okay. And before you even get to the next one, which is physiological needs or housing, you know, a lot of other things before you can self-actualize. Okay. So you can see that we're lacking a lot of things and those things are causing issues in our lives and people have similar things. It's just similar. Okay. Because we all come to counseling. It may even be um, relationship problems, your marriage or whatever. So it's all similar, but people come with in different perspectives, you know? Yeah, okay. Have yeah. you noticed any difference between like specific problems in the black community compared to the white community or men and women? Have you noticed anything specific that mm, a lot of men deal with this, a lot of black guys deal with this or, yeah. or not? The thing with a lot of black men, even because I, like I say, we, therapists, we, our colleagues, we, we talk, Black men, first of all, is they don't show emotions, most of them. And that's what people complain about. Even their wives, when they come to counseling, you know, they don't show emotions. They're always stiff and, you know, and they, they always want to be strong and stuff. But saying that, a lot of women as well, they all have their own issues. And, but because they show too much emotions, it, it affects the men. You see that it's both extremes. The men don't show emotions. The women show more emotions. And they can't can kind of compromise to get to where they want to be. Yeah, okay. okay. And is that, sorry, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Is that like a, a thing for black people in general or just for yeah. men, women in general? Black, most black men in general. Yeah, okay. Black. Then the whites, the, the, the thing I notice about the whites is because if you check that um, hierarchy of Abraham, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yeah. they've achieved a lot of things those basic needs and other things. So what, what they are seeking for are other things like, you know, my pet died. Oh, I'm having trauma because my pet died. But if you talk to an African person, you know, it would like, what are you talking about? I've not even fed myself and stuff you're talking about. Yeah, okay. But to the person, that's what is going through, you know, is affecting the person at the time. Yeah, okay. But to a black person, you say, let me eat first, food, shelter. You can see that in different stages and different phases. Yeah. So people who are in a lower socioeconomic background haven't got time to be thinking about higher things on the pyramid. Things, true. Deal with the small the yeah. big things before they start to, okay. They think of the top ones. Right now, okay. Um, what was I gonna ask? Um, so obviously you're a counselor, you, you know everything, you know from, you've got all the training. Yes. How about you and your mental health, your relationships? You know, mm. uh, obviously you're the perfect husband. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I am, but I've tried. Perfect, <laughs> perfect father, all this kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> but what, what would you say? So, um, the thing is, it's a transformation. Okay. Like what I say, men, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself as well, because I used to be that way. You know, for instance, most black men, if you notice it, or if you have noticed it before, if they're walking on the street or high street, they don't hold their wives. They're walking like head, you know, like, <laughs> like G.I. Joe walking, and the wife is following him behind, or children are walking behind him, like, you know, <laughs> you know, but those things, they're not doing it consciously because that's the way they're built. Yeah, okay. You know? So it's, I used to do it as well. And it's not that I, we do it purposely, but with, like me, I've done counseling. I've, when it comes to your awareness, then you know that it's an issue. Yeah, so okay. that's what counseling does. It brings this into the awareness, okay. and, you know, and you start to work on it. Yeah. You know, the way you talk with your kids, the way you relate with other people. Okay. So counseling kind of broadens, opens your mind to a lot of things, okay. you know, and even the way you interact with others as well, even in the church. That's why I said, I started having issues with, you know, because yeah, yeah. my way of thinking changed, you know. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that I don't judge people. Just if you do this, send them out of the church. Yeah. Oh, he went to the club. Send them out of the church. Yeah, yeah. The church is where they're supposed to come in. You're not supposed to drive them away. Yeah. And you're not supposed to even judge because sin is sin. Even Bible says even, even lying. A liar goes to hell. Yeah. So even you thinking that, oh, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not this. But I'm lying. Think you're better. It's all say the same. Yeah. So you're not supposed to judge. You don't have the right to judge anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you know. So those are one of the things. So I worked on myself, and I'm still working on myself. It just 
transformation. So, yeah, okay. so do you like do you engage in counseling yourself, or do you use the things that you learn professionally on yourself? Like, do you have your own counselor? Yeah, we do. As a counselor, you must have a counselor as well. Okay, so that's that's a okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it's one of the rules, guidelines. As you when you be, when you are a member of um, a body. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the rules. You must. You, must. You, you see that as a like. Let's say you had a choice and you didn't yeah. have to do that. Do you think it's something that you would continue to do? You've seen the benefits, yes. no? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of benefits because when people come to you, they say a lot of things as well, and mm -hmm. sometimes it affects you personally. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because a lot of people come with a lot of things, a lot of different things, and sometimes it affects you. When you take it in a lot, it affects you. That's why they also advise self care. In, yeah. any, in any way you can, you know, to do yeah. and stuff. So when you take it on to the next person, they kind of help you to kind of, you know, talk through it and stuff. Just like confession in the Catholic. You yeah. know, the priest, they also have priests they confess to. Yes, okay. And all that is just the same way, yeah. Yeah. So, so do you think you would be as effective as what you are if you didn't have that outlet? No, I think it, it works both ways. I think it's, it, it works hand in hand. Okay. It's, 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 it's very necessary and very important that you do that. Yeah. Well, so, um, so one of the things from a physical health point of view is that the GMC say that it's not advisable. They frown on you treating yourself or your family mm -hmm. that are close to you. So yeah, true. Is, mm -hmm. is, it, is that the same thing in counseling? The like, same. Would you would you counsel, let's say, your wife or your brother? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's it's not allowed because you're, you're now you you have a biased opinion mind or your opinions, which is not which is not you. you when you, someone comes to client uh, for counseling and you know the person straight away, you tell the person. Or let's say you is a mother in the, your child's school or a, a father. Your you just straight away. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're we'll gonna work together because yeah okay you're seeing the person every day and yeah. that conflict so you just yeah yeah okay okay um i have quite a few more questions uh, okay so um we've, we've we've heard the phrase it takes a village to raise a child okay now um i'm thinking like traditionally before the industrialization of africa mm. um we were we were all in villages you know in this yeah, like this anyway we were all in vi villages and we were true. probably in each other's lives in a way yeah. that we're probably not now yeah as a counselor what do you think is the effect of that in terms of and on our mental health because i have my own opinions that it's probably yeah. not a good thing you know okay. one of the ways that we, we a village raises a child is that it doesn't you know, as parents, your uncles and aunties could be there for you, could look out for mm -hmm. you. you. Yeah, could, true. From a physical safety point of view, you could mm -hmm. play around because everybody was looking. Yeah. But from yeah. an emotional, a psychological well-being point of view, um, you had a lot more people to talk to. You actually true. were talking. What's, what's true. your opinion? My opinion is, uh, first of all, we as human beings, we're created to be interactive. Okay. So to talk, to talk to people, to have friends and families, but the things are changing. Like you say, that more, more people are more on their phones and things. They're not interacting more, and those are the things that are causing more issues to people because you meant you, you meant to lay it out there. But I think where you where you're heading, is, what you're talking about is, it's good in a way is because when you say uncles and aunties and all of those things, back then there's a, a lot of abuses that are not recorded. Okay. Because the, 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 your, your circle of trust is expanded. You know, you, a, a daughter might say, let me go to my uncle. You don't know what's going to happen to your daughter there. When they come back, they will not tell you because they're frightened. A lot of things. Okay. Or go to one extended uncle you don't know. You know, and stuff, stuff like that. But it, it, in another way, it's good because, like you say, people are taking, a lot of people are taking care of you and stuff. But in the other aspect of abuse and stuff, yes. it's not a good thing. It's yeah. good when the circle is a little bit small. And that's why I teach my children, you know. You, you know, here, your, your uncle is, everyone is not your uncle. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can't just say, oh, that's your uncle. Tomorrow they say, oh, I want to, you just have to reduce the circle of trust to your father or, you know, specific people that you know that if anything happens, you know where to 
you know? Yeah, okay. Okay. So for you, there's still a village, but maybe the village isn't. The assumption that every positive that looks like you is in your village is not a problem. It, it's, no, it's, not, it's not good. And I, from experience as well, we're growing up, a lot of things, you know, you learn, a lot of things you learn from going out there, you know, you know, things that you're not supposed to watch movies you're not supposed to because you're going to different places and yeah, you know okay. interacting with these people of other ages that you're not even supposed to because they are doing things you're not supposed to you learn things at your you know the age you know you're not supposed to you know yeah. so yeah it's in a way but they like everything has pros and cons you know okay okay um so i am um i am um fascinated with the the idea of the fact that, so I, I'm coming to the conclusion that everybody should probably have a counselor, a therapist. I know, yes. that, I know that, you know, in the, U, in the UK, we're probably not as comfortable with the idea as yeah. America. In America, like- Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. A, it's a big thing. In, it's in a big thing, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. So, and obviously there's a difference between mental health and mental illness. Yes. Um, yes. So I suppose my question is, um, from the point of view of a counsellor, mm -hmm. what would you say to the person who has never really thought about um, getting a tune-up from a counselling point of view? You know, they're probably young, they're healthy, mm -hmm. not something they've really ever thought about. Thought about. Okay. What, what would you say to that person? Well, I'll say to the because normally he's... As long as what one thing about counseling is, if you accept who you are, what you are, and you're okay with it, that's fine. But it's when you have disparities or you have conflicts of interest, because that's what it's all about. You know, in counseling, there's what we we'll call your true self and your real self, your ideal self mm -hmm. and your true self. Your yeah. true self is your natural person, who you are, your reality. Then your ideal self is what you what you want to be, your perception. Yeah, okay. Let's say, for instance, you're, you're on social media. We don't post pictures that we look, you know, we don't look well or yeah, you yeah, try yeah. to Photoshop and do the. So that thing, you're trying to bridge the gap yeah. between your real self and your ideal self. Yeah, okay. So in that, another example is let's just say um, I want to buy a house or I don't have a house. My real self, my reality is I don't have a house, mm -hmm. you know, but my ideal self is that I want to have. So when you have that disparity and it's disturbing you, it causes, starts to cause affliction, depression, yeah, okay. anxiety, you know, that kind of thing. So to me, if, if you have those things, it's good to go to a counselor where you can you have this confidential space to air your thoughts. Yeah. Even if I kind of advise people as well, before you get divorced or separate, separation, go for counseling yeah. to see if things, you know, there might be things you're not seeing that, that in counseling, They'll help you to see the, a different perspective of it. Even life transitions and things. Even our children, they're going through something. You, some, you know, some kids, they go through grief and their parents think it's okay. But they kind of play, play it out in different ways. Yeah. Or, you know, and they don't know the, the, those things, but the kids are trying to, they're reacting in a different way, yeah. which may be negative to a lot of people. But yeah. what they're trying to say is that I need attention. I need something. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you know, I'm, like I said, most of the things, they say, oh, you know, you need prayer. I go to, we're fine. I accept it. But sometimes you need yeah. psychological help. Do, and do they're you, out there. Yeah, okay. So um, do, do you think that everybody should try counseling at least once? Yes, I, I believe. Everybody. When, when you try it, then you see there's nothing... It's not as big as or bad as the way people people say it. Yeah, you know, because oh no, don't even think about it. And in church, I've heard people when they when they say you're going to counseling. You know, when I gossip in this, that sister is like she's mad now. She's going, to, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah Because yeah. she's going to counseling. Counseling can be anything at all. Even yeah. in the Bible, when Jesus yeah. when when Lazarus died, Jesus wept, so he grieved. Yeah. So also David when Absalom died. So grief is not a, when you go to counseling to say I'm going to air my thoughts to help me go through this grief or something. It's yeah. not nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I I know for myself, like I mean, I've only ever really been exposed to counseling in the context of like 
what you see on TV and often in America, you sit on the couch, you lie down, you talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I know that I'm a Christian and I'm very yeah. aware of um, like um, spiritual influences, you know? Yeah. So I know mm-hmm. one of the fears that I had, like I didn't want to go to counseling and then wake up one day and be like, hey, there's no God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> something that was yeah. a fear, you know, for, for me. The concept yeah. of it, because I mean, I'm a doctor, so the concept of having yeah. to a tune up in that wasn't bad, but it was the like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, suddenly, <laughs> okay. you know, change my whole world yeah. view because you, you don't know where, the person is coming from you know yeah. the counselor so you know how would you how would you comfort me and say no 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing about it is the good thing about private practice is you choose your own counselor yeah and one of the things you, when you choose your counselor you know what the you know their faith like me on my website you see that um i'm an, i'm a member of association of christian counselors okay which means yeah and also other things like and like your race a lot of people don't want to go and see a white person because maybe what they want to talk about is imagine you're having a, um, a racial issue or yeah. Yeah. racism and you're going to talk to a white person. It, it's not going to work. Yeah. Even though they say it might work, but it's, it's rather you speak to somebody that already knows what you're going through. Yeah, okay. Even sometimes culturally, traditionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because when you're saying something to about culture, you know, when you go to sleep and have nightmares, is uh, a the white person is what, what are you talking about, you know? You know? <laughs> But when you when you call someone like me, you know, you know your fellow person, yeah, I yeah. know what you're talking about already. Okay. So we get along, and we there's all the call psychological contact. It happens straight away because okay. I know most of what you're talking about already, even your faith. So, so you would advocate if you were looking for one, if you can find somebody that you that is similar to you from a demographic point of view. True helps with a rapport. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that we have to do when we're seeing people, you know, in the hospital, whatever, is try and establish rapport quickly because yeah. the satisfaction of the patient mm-hmm. is often going to be um, determined by the, the, your ability to um, establish rapport quickly and your mm-hmm. com- communication. So from yeah. a, from a um, hospital point of view, the majority of, of complaints are mm-hmm. not to do with your ability to care or not care. Yeah, true. To do with communication. I didn't like the way the doctors brought to me. It isn't. Yeah. Important. yeah. And and again and and again. Um, when you come to, what was I talking about again? Yeah, when you when you want your, your a counselor as well. Yeah. If you're not in private practice, definitely you're gonna go to. Let's say we have free counseling, which yeah. is, um, um, charity organizations like Health in Mind and other places. There, you don't have a choice. Okay. Because they give you who, just like a hospital, they give you who, who you get. Yeah. Okay. Who you get. Yeah. But sometimes you might just kind of put it, chip it in there, please. Could I get? If it's possible, could I get? Okay. So, so, person, it will help me, you know. So, that's an advice for people as well, because those people are free. I'm not saying everybody should go to private practice, but a lot yeah. of people don't have the money to pay. Wow. But there's so much out there, psychological services that are free, okay. and people should utilize it. Okay. So, you talked about apps and, and free psychological services. So, let's say, I'm at the pre-contemplation stage. Mm-hmm. I am aware of the fact that, you know, therapy counseling is a road that I'm going to take. I okay. want to do that. Yeah. What's the best way, you know, so the organizations that you're aware of, you can say them again, and what's the best way of researching so that I can come away feeling happy that I've picked the round right counselor? Yeah, the thing is, Google, like I said, Google is your... Is, is everything the answer That's to everything you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, 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 you, when you google it or BACP or any body counseling body but I'm a member of British Association of Counseling and um, Psychotherapy which is BACP yeah and okay. the other ones NCC and so many UKCP if you go to the website or even google it or even there are so many directories yeah. counseling directory yeah psychology today if you go to if you go to the their website you see lists loads yeah. And you can do like refine the research to what you want. Yeah. And the, the, like my, my picture, everything is there, my details and the, what I do and, you know, and stuff. So it will help you to kind of choose who you want and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, you talked, you have talked about some apps. Are there any that you yeah. would recommend? There's so many apps. If you go to NHS website, it's okay. just mental health 
apps, NHS website. There's so many approved by NHS as well. Okay. Some are free, some you have to pay. Yeah. But you see, it's out there. So people should, even when I'm talking about um, psychological services that are free out there, just Google it. Whatever you're going through, yeah. CARA is um, a center for rape and, you know, there's so many, domestic violence or grieving. Yeah. Just type it in. The, your local one will come up and so many counselors, and it's free. Worst case scenario, they put you on a waiting list. Yeah, okay. Because of the backlog and stuff. But when it's your turn, they will ring you up to come for counseling. So do you st so obviously we've established that if you can find somebody that relates to you, that's the mm -hmm. best case scenario. Yeah. But would you still advocate if you, if maybe if you can't find all I can find is a, uh, a gentleman who may not be able to relate to me culturally. Yeah. Is that still better than no counseling? If yeah, I it's still feel? better because they are equipped as well to okay. to do it. It's just that sometimes it's harder because there's some things you might be saying. But they are very, very quick to do it. Trust yeah. me. I, I, yeah, I'm advocate to that. So don't what, not do my it. My counselor is a white man. Yeah, okay. So don't not do it if you can't find somebody that looks like you or, you know, has your cultural background. Okay. Yeah. Um, fine. I've got a lot <laughs> more questions. Um, okay. What I was going to say. Um, right. So from a physical point of view, mm -hmm. there are certain things that I can tell anybody that's going to help them physically. So okay. drink, drink water, eat fruit and veg, mm -hmm. exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. I can tell that to anybody and it will help them. Are there mm -hmm. some like hacks or advice that you can give that are universally applicable to anybody from a counseling point of view? I think it's the same every way. The same eat well, exercise, drink water. Okay. It all helps. But the main thing is do not can, do not overburden your brain, your, your thinking. Because everything about us is thinking. You're always thinking, oh, I have a lot of issues. I'm thinking of stress. And it, then it causes you stress. Yeah. So whenever you, you start to think, just kind of do self-care. It is music, whatever it is that will help you to kind of... Because when you engage in that thinking, what it does is it keeps driving you to, into it. And before you know it, you're depressed. Yeah. You know, and talk to someone. There are people out there, talk to someone. But when I say talk to someone, uh, you know, people will say, oh, you want money. They want people to come to you. As long as their friend can keep your, your whatever you're saying confidential, yeah, yeah, yeah. talk to the person. Yeah, okay. Talk to people. Talk to your colleagues at work. Even when you see your colleagues at work acting in a way, talk to them. Just, yeah. how are you doing? Even, it goes a long way to say to somebody, are you all right? You know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You know, just, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. Those kind of things help as well. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Um, so if we can pivot and talk about, um, so for me, a lot of the reason why I've started having these kinds of conversations is again, so I had a stroke, but before okay. that, and me becoming very aware of my own health, yeah. um, and my own mental health and it, m mental issues were part of that conversation. Um, the, just before the stroke was when um, George Floyd was um, killed. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, and, you know, I became, I mean, we, I think these are things that we've always known, but yeah. we were reminded about the fact that, you know, um, black people, we have to do better at making sure that we take care of ourselves. True. Because, you know, ev evidently, there are lots of things militating against us, from a physical yeah. and, a, yeah. and a mental point True. of view. So I am aware of a lot of the American conversation is, is like, um, you know, enslaved people were taken from certain places, moved to America. Mm -hmm. Generationally, it's become a big issue. It, 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 there's no way that it won't affect, won't have affected the mental space. And stuff. Of course, of course. Yeah. But my question is, what's your opinion on, on how it affected the people who didn't, go so we know so you know it's, it's more common to talk about the fact that the enslaved people loss of identity loss of culture mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. but so i was born in nigeria so yeah. I'm, first, I'm first generation i've lived here most of my life me too um, for, the, yeah. for the people who are still in nigeria or for the people who stayed their family yeah. was taken but they stayed yeah. how could slavery and that whole thing have affected us what's what's your opinion on that I think it affected us in so many ways. First of all, genetically, 
because they keep saying that it's in our genes. It's, 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 in, it's still in there. And uh, a lot of things that you see and you hear, even that are still happening. That's why sometimes, I know most of my friends, when somebody is talking to them, even in their offices or a white man is talking to them, they just get angry for no reason. Okay. Because subconsciously they're in there already. Because, yeah, okay. And whenever someone like a white person tells you something, you kind of, you will not understand it the way he's, honest, he's saying it. Because of the, your, your bias already, you just yeah. see this, oh, it's time to take a piece. It's time to take a piece. You know, you just get, start getting angry for no, for no reason. But it's just that it's in there already. Yeah. And that's why I wish they can understand that when people say, oh, all lives matter. Yes, all lives matter. But we've gone through generations of things that, that are forbidden. There are a lot of things that have happened. And it's in there already. It's inbuilt. And it's, 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 some, it's not something that will just go away in a day. Yeah, and when things like what you mentioned, George Floyd happens, it kind of triggers it again. Yeah, the trauma. You know, it, the trauma it, it brings it up again. Everybody's angry, and people are just you know. So, but ways of doing that is like you know, talking and trying to. If I if I say things are going to get better, I I can't. I'm I'm not a prophet to say that things are going to get better in the future. But the things like when that John Floyd thing happened, a lot of people understood more. You know, it kind of dragged some people to our side as well to understand what yeah. this is all about yeah so i'm just hoping that in the future you know things will get better but at the moment let's just do what we can and yeah try to you know associate ourselves and talk to ourselves and just ease off a bit if i say ease off, i know if we want to bite me or comment <laughs> what do you mean by ease off <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just just i don't know yeah, I don't know. You, whatever it, it can, that you can take to, if it's religion, just to calm yourself down. Just, yeah, okay. just do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, something you said made, made me want to ask. You know this thing about the self actualization. Actualization. I, yeah. I have not seen it, but is one of the things on there being able to be understood by other people? Is that a, is that a part of self actualization or or not? Yes, it, it is because at, in that pyramid, you can kind of find out where someone is. Or what they're lacking, or you know, to get to know, know where they are at the point of their lives, you know, and you know, when we mentioned about other things that people don't accept counseling, immigration status, or no reports, yeah. for, you know, those cases, those things it affects people that even if they need, even if they want to, they can't even have it. You see, so yeah, it's just it's one of those things. The actualization is that they will tell you where, and like, like I said, most of Africans. I wish I can share it. I have I have a diagram of it. I don't know if I can. I don't know somewhere, but. If I can show you, I don't know if you take well, a I minute. Mean, if, just... if you tell us what it is, and we can Google it ourselves. So the the, the Abraham I... Abraham Maslow hierarchy of needs. Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it to show you um, a pyramid of your where we you know basic things, the things that we need in life and stuff. Yeah. Oh, Let me see if I can just... find it. Abraham Maslow. Maslow. Yeah, okay, I think I found it. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So you could if you look on there, you see the basic things, air, water, food, yes, yeah, safety needs. So those are the things that when you get to the top, where you have self actualization. Yeah. That means you've met all the so that means you you but the thing about it is the good life, as Carl Rogers mentioned, is is a process, it's not a destination. Yeah, okay. the, good, the good life means that at every time you're congruent, that your ideal self is, is congruent with your real self. You yeah, know, things yeah. are just, good life doesn't mean that you're, you're in an island or somewhere drinking margarita and enjoying yourself. <laughs> a lot of people that are there, they're doing that still. They have issues yeah. and they're still, even still talking about, you know, societal ideations and things like that. So, but the good life is just being congruent with yourself. For you, good life, like you say, is marrying, marrying or the you ideal too. and the, the real. The, the real self, always. So, so as a counselor, that is mm -hmm. abundant life for you. So when the Bible yes. talks about, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly, for me, part of it is making sure that you are in the best physical shape, yes. but also understanding that even if you're not, you can go to God for healing. That's but it. For you, it's... Um, acceptance. Acceptance. Okay. Yeah, just accept okay. who you are. Yeah, you can, 
you can want other things. You can want things, but at the stage, you are, like Bible says, it talks about contentment. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah, Just okay. be content with what you have, so that you don't put yourself under pressure to earn yeah. more. You know, you see your friend driving a mess, make Mercedes Benz or you know Range Rover. Oh, I want to drive a Range Rover. You start yeah. pushing yourself. You know that causes afflictions and distress and all kinds of things. So just accept what you are at the time, like Bible says, it will make it all beautiful at its own time. Yeah. Okay. You know, just wait for it. So let, let me go through the, the, the self-actualization thing. So the first on the bottom is physiological needs, air, mm -hmm. water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. Yep. Then safety needs, personal security, employment, resources, health, property. So like you say, a lot of, Black people in a lot of the world were it's already still, <laughs> were already having to aspire that, to, these, to these things. That's you know? it. Um, and then the next one, love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. And then the next one, esteem, respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom. And then really? self-actualization, desire to become the most that one can be. Now, in medicine, let's say in an emergency, there mm -hmm. is the concept of what we call ABC triage. Okay. A, airway, B, breathing, C, circulation, D, yeah. you know, um, yeah, everything else essentially. So yeah. in, in, in an emergency situation, mm -hmm. you don't move down till you've sorted the okay, top one. Okay, the top one. If you don't sort that, everything else is irrelevant. If you don't sort yeah. that somebody's airway, that is going to compromise them okay. earlier than what their circulation might if you do that. So don't move on from airway till you know it's secure. Yeah. Then okay. you so would you say that it's similar from uh, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs sort of thing? Is, is there any point looking at esteem and self-actualization if I'm trying to find food? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the thing is first of all you stop whenever you're doing that just stop think or relax stop yourself from whatever it is you're thinking or doing yeah then relax your mind and like i say self-care whatever it is that will just put your mind off things it is calling someone or calling you know a friend or just to talk with you and see you know, kind of calm you down a bit yeah. because like you said, you don't have food and stuff. And you, you, of course, if you keep thinking about it or say doing something, but when you talk to a friend, a friend might have a friend or a friend of, that will help you, whatever situation it is, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you know, I have someone like, okay, if you want food or come, I have food, just call someone, yeah. you know, at least you have friends that you can talk to that can do things. Yeah. They might not have a lot, but they can <laughs> do basic things. You know, my wife is just, um, Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, babe. Yeah. Um, she, she, my wife is a baker, by the way. Oh, okay. Ooh, so if, nice. you need any, if you need any cakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, one second. Someone's at the door. One second. Sorry. Okay, cool, cool, cool. She's not looking up, babe. She's not looking up, babe. Is the key down here? Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so. So, let's give me two minutes and I'll get my phone. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, have you heard of a lady called Anita Phillips? No. Okay. Or have you heard of a lady called Caroline Leaf? No, I don't think so. Okay, so they're both... Christians who are, you know, uh, in the um, neurosciences and um, mental health okay. arena. Anita Phillips is a therapist herself. Okay. Um, and one of the things that she's talked about is a trauma, um, a trauma-based approach to race relations. 
Okay. So the example she gave is, for instance, if you rescued somebody from a sex trafficking ring mm -hmm. and that person said, in that house, you know, um, there are people who are being taken advantage of, okay. um, you know, everybody would say, okay, and they would do something about it. There wouldn't yeah. be, oh, let's just wait for the police or, you know, let's just, we don't know, mm -hmm. let's just wait for the evidence. Yeah. You know? But then sometimes as black people, we can feel like when we say, this mm -hmm. is my experience, the immediate reaction from other people is like, well, you know, like, is that really true? True, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, or like immediately somebody is um, killed or is the victim of police brutality, for instance, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, it's really important every wrong thing they ever did in their life, as if. Oh yeah. It <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. Um, yeah. True. I found that you know very interesting. This race, race related. I'll I'll send you some the stuff if you want. Just to uh, okay. Have, have a look at it. All right. Cool. Uh, so. Uh, okay. Last last few questions. If you had all the if you had all the money in mm -hmm. the world, money was not yeah. an issue. Yeah. What would you do? I'll give free counseling to everyone. Okay. You'll because be that's happy. one of the things, that's one of the things I keep tell, telling my friends, just, yeah, just I have to pay bills, honestly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if I had all the money, free counseling, everyone. Okay. Because I've seen counseling work and it, it, it's, it's, it, it turns people's lives around. Yeah. You know, you can see someone that is having suicidal ideations or self-harming all of a sudden is okay and stuff. Yes, sometimes. I, I, I'm not saying that it's my, my power is a gift or maybe it's God. It's, a, it's, yeah. you know, it's God's, you know, by grace of God, I am what I am. But in as much as I pray and do those things also, like I said, I, I didn't want to sideline myself to do only Christians. I wanted yeah. to do non-believers as well. Yeah. That's a way of me reaching out to them. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like saying that, like I say, a lot of people, like why I say we shouldn't judge people is that at the end of it all, we all got to give accounts for ourselves. Yeah. You know, at the end of it all. Because there are a lot of people that you say they're non-believers, but they're doing, they're really doing good works. I used to discuss it with my wife, like all this Oxfam, British, um, you know, all those charity goodies that go to countries that even mosquitoes are biting them and sleeping on the floor. Yeah. They volunteer themselves to go and do those things without even money. You know, and at the end you can say, oh, they, well, it's up to God to judge or to say who, who he is, who's going to heaven and who's not. Yeah. So I kind of, yeah, I would just give free counseling to everyone and that see how I can transform thing. people's life. That would be my thing. Yeah. Okay. And if you could go back and speak to your 15 year old self mm -hmm. and then your 25 year old self, mm -hmm. what would you tell yourself? Uh, I wasted a lot of things. I wasted a lot of years and which I, I wouldn't say waste now, but probably experience. I experience, you know, I would call it experience now. But if, if we are prophets, which we are not, we'll have known how to, decisions we'll make, the right decisions, to do the right things at the right time and, you know, to get to where we want to be at a better time or a better, you know, age or something like that. So, yeah, a lot of things I will take back and say, you know what, I will have done this earlier and I will have done that, you so know, like, to get... Specifically, what if you're, if I was your 15-year-old self, what would mm. you do? Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, a lot of things like, you know, uh, a lot of... Things, negative things I did in the past that I shouldn't have done, clubbing and things, you know, you yeah, know those yeah. kind of things. That, yeah, not, I'm not saying what extremes, too many extremes, and I would have made better decisions, you know, in life. So, you, so you think you would have told your 15 year old self earlier to seek balance? Yeah, not to Probably, run to yeah. either. So, okay, and yes, your 25 yes. year old self. 25 old years of, what was I in 25 years? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think 25 years, I was, I was okay because I, as usual, I was, I was struggling and being like other, every other person and stuff. But like, the thing is like this course, I did it three years ago. I would have done it earlier. And by now I will have, you know, yeah, I yeah. will have accomplished a lot by now, you know, uh, stuff. So okay. I would have preferred to have done it earlier. Maybe not to like say 25 years. I would have done it in 25 years. By now, I will have been a guru. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Fair okay. Yeah. And again, so um, 
so we've talked about the the um i mean i, I know we've talked about it in the book again i want to be specific i don't want to neglect our people in the church mm. um specifically people in the church who are wary mm-hmm. of the space of counseling mm-hmm. they may even be aware of of the need yeah to talk to somebody but they're wary yeah you know how would you so two questions how would you advise them and the second question is specifically let's say to church leaders and pastors so people who may not have yeah. had experience mm-hmm. in this area or training in this area how yeah. would you advise these two sets of to people? the to the people i would say first of all like some most of the pastors don't know everything and yes they have gifts from god and god speaks to them but they don't really know everything and sometimes a pastor cannot you can't give what you don't have right. some pastors are not saying all oh, yeah they even have issues in their own homes some of them are not they don't even have intimacy with their wives they are, if, if, if pastors wives open their mouth to tell you what they go through you know fine in the church, they are gods, they are saints. People are worshiping them. People like them and stuff. But back home, they are not, sometimes they're not what they seem to be. And now they are advising other people on what to do. And I know a pastor that preached about this. A lot of pastors as well have damaged people's marriages. Oh, it's not God's will. Leave that marriage. You know, those kind of things they tell you to do. What you do. And people, because they respect them, they do the things that pastors tell them to do. So I advise them, seek a professional help. Yeah, okay do that and like i said even if you don't want like i said select choose the one you want like you know a faith person yeah there's so many counselors that are that are members of association of christian counselors as well yeah okay. if you know choose what you want uh, your denomination if you want a, a protestant a catholic there are so many out there it's, it's in their website and stuff then to the pastors i i know it may not be possible but i advise they do the training it really helped they will learn a lot and if they add that to their pastoral work, yeah, the sky will be their limit because then now they'll know how to talk to people. And how to, because first of all, counseling is not about giving advice. Hmm. It's about guiding the person because we believe as counselors that the client is an expert to themselves. They know themselves better than I do. Hmm. So the only problem is they're not congruent, which means that they're having issues. So they're not, you know, in a, they're not seeing perspectives in a, in a, in a, in a good way. Mm-hmm. So why they come to counseling is that you, you help them to guide them to see perspectives in a different way so that they can make decisions of themselves and say, yeah, oh, okay. I'd rather do this. It's like somebody saying, I want to divorce. You can't call the person and say, oh, okay, yes, go and divorce the person. Yeah. You let the person see different perspectives and what is going on and stuff. So the person say, no, I think I'd rather deal with this first. You know, let them come to their own conclusions. So I would advise the pastors as well, or men of God or people of power mm. should kind of do the training yeah. to get more, you know, to equip themselves more with skills to do this. Is there so any specific training for people in ministry with regards to mental, that you're aware of? Any specific? It, there are different modalities to counseling. That's another thing. So when you mentioned that in America, people are slaying on the couch and stuff. There are so many, <laughs> you know, there's humanistic, which I did, person-centered is, you know, humanistic. There's CBT, Cognitive yeah. behavioral ter- therapy, which mostly NHS uses. There is um, psycho- psychodynamics, which is psychoanalytical. So many, just thoughts, so many out there. Yeah. So the thing is, you choose the one that, that you know, kind of relates to you, yeah. which is someone like me. I, I, because person-centered is, not, is non-directive. You don't, it's not something that you just ask questions and do, try to fix someone. Yeah, but other, other ones, like my wife will say, my wife says she can't do mine because... What it does is like I'm petting people, you know, you're petting them to, you know, do this way. My wife says no, that she would like to do the ones that is directive. Why are you not doing this? Yeah, okay. you know, is it, that's psychoanalytical and other things. I'm not that kind of person, so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not directive. Yeah, yeah. So but the other ones, so a lot of people that are different. Someone might like the someone, some people like the, the way I work, some don't like it. Some come to me, look, I'm feeling this way. I just want something, just tell me what to do. Just those things are directive, like CBT, you know, I'm being anxious. What do I do? Yeah. So that's another modality, and you yeah. know, yeah. Okay. Um, is are there any mental health groups in the UK that are specifically aimed at uh, helping black men? Oh, so, so many. 
Okay. Because I was okay. I was looking online, I couldn't see. There's this um um network that I mean B A A T N. Is um Black, African and Asian th- therapy network. Yeah, that's yeah yeah. Yeah, so in that group, you see a lot of black, you know, Asians or therapists in it. They are members of it. So with there, you can choose as well and see. No, what, what I mean is that, so like, MENCAP is, is, for, is for everybody in population, but are there any organizations who say our aim okay. is, to, is to target and have conversations and help black men specifically? So regardless of who the counselors are, yeah, aim is black men. Are there any counselors? No, no. There's no groups like that. No, no, no. They, they, what they do is try to generalize everything. They don't want to make it like you know, like circulation or yeah, trying to put you know, you know, the whites they don't like those kind of things. They like to bring everybody together. Yeah, okay. You know, in in, in the same place, but it's just um, yeah, no, they don't like the the idea. They don't like the idea. So there there, there isn't. No, I don't. In my knowledge, no, I don't think so. Because I do wonder, having spoken to some of my friends and stuff, if there was an organization specifically targeted, you know, that might help people think, mm, actually, well, you know, I might. Um, but the thing is, any counselor can decide to run their own groups. Yeah, okay. Like, if I decide to run groups for men, let's say black men, yeah, I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anybody can decide to say, okay, I want to run. Even like one of my supervisor advised me, I've not done that. But in my church, to kind of run something like that for black men, kind of give them awareness of counseling. Yeah. You okay. know, to see that how counseling works and, you know, you know, the, the way you do AA, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A- a- addictions. You can yeah. do a group like that and people come and share things. And, but getting black people to do that is, is like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a sci fi. Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 50. <laughs> yeah. How many? So, I mean, because again, this is something I'm, I'm really interested in. Let's say, you know, it's something you wanted to, to move forward with and we could do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it wouldn't be recorded, but we could do it with Zoom. Yeah. What's yeah. the ideal number? So, for one person, ideal number is usually between six to 10 because you, you, depending on the time, maybe yeah. six to 10 people at the same time to, to be able to facilitate it. To yeah. facilitate each each person, you know, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's it's an idea. I'm gonna. I think we'll. we'll, 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 we'll okay. So, yeah, it, it, I'm allowed. We're allowed to do that and stuff. Yeah. You just yeah, you're okay. allowed to do it. It's just getting the people to do it is is another thing. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, any questions you have for me? Um, not really. Not really. Okay. Yeah, but I just hope that this. Because my the aim of me doing it is that people will be aware of it and yeah. kind of embrace it. They yeah. shouldn't see mental health as, as something you know like taboo. Oh, don't don't go there. Yeah, you know they should embrace it. Yeah, and make use of it. It's out there. It's some yeah. are free. Some you want to pay for. It's even in the apps. Like I said, mental apps. People should appreciate and use it. And just like we use hospitals, GP, you use it and feel free and be yeah. yourself. So for you, the aim of it is to try and normalize this in people's lives yeah so it's not, they should be aware of it they should yeah. embrace it they shouldn't be afraid of it it's, i mean I, i'm i'm reminded of um the verse where my people are uh, perish for lack of lack of knowledge yeah, exactly and, you know um so there's a gentleman called jim Rohn i've started listening to who is a um inspirational speaker and he says what you don't know will hurt you true and true. sometimes because of the fact that we're not experienced in the areas that we need to develop, you know, it's, it's like mm-hmm. walking through life with a limp, but not realizing mm-hmm. you have a limp. True. And True. you go to the physician, the physician says, oh, you have a limp. They correct mm-hmm. it and it's through life through. A different, <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> yeah. different way. Yeah. So even in um, um, what you call in the Bible, the second Timothy 1, 7 says that for God has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but of yeah. love and of a sound mind. Yes. That sound mind means good mental health. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and there's so many verses in the Bible. Maybe that's another thing for another day. Yeah, yeah. About, about the mind and what the mind is all about. Because yeah. as the man thinks, so is he. Yeah. So when your mind is wrong, and every other thing will be negative all the time and stuff. So, yeah. so many. Yeah. The I mind mean, is very, very important. People don't, people underestimate it, but it's absolutely. very, very. It's very important and very powerful. 
So, yeah. I mean, firstly, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I'm, I really enjoyed I'm, the conversation. I'm I am very to... interested in this thing about black mental health. I'm also interested in, so there are some people, so sorry, I'll backtrack. I believe that when God wrote the Bible, he mm -hmm. had things in it that dealt with every issue. Sure. So if you're open to it, mm -hmm. I wonder whether at some point we can schedule another conversation and we can go mm -hmm. through the Bible's this depictions yeah. of things like depression, anxiety and stuff and talk about, because some people would be like, huh? Somebody in the Bible was depressed? Depressed, <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. That, that might help some people. Yeah. So if, mm -hmm. if you're open to that, I think it could be booked. I am, I am open to it. And then even from your counseling background to say, okay, if I could speak to David, mm -hmm. <laughs> when what? he was depressed, I would say true. this and that. Okay, so. Yeah, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it. That's it. Thank you very much, sir. I'll All send right. you talk about uh, Anita Williams. And, um, Anita All right, cool. Anita yeah, Anita I'm Facebook. interested. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me as well. Thank no you so much. All right, you too. Bless you.